Hi everybody, Martin Hill here. So not long to go now, folks, before the big fight tomorrow night. Carl Froch v George Groves 2 at Wembley, 80,000 people. They reckon it's going to be one of the, the biggest fights put on in this country. It should be absolutely magic. It should be a great occasion. Can't wait. Look, we've all been looking forward to this. The banter's gone on. It's just been absolutely crazy. It seems as well you're either in one camp or the other, you know, and I have to say I do favour Carl Froch. We know George Groves is a good boxer, but Carl Froch is the warrior. He's the fighter, and I do favour Froch as a person. I find he's the guy with the wit, with the intelligence, with the charm. Not saying I completely dislike Groves, but just sometimes I wish he'd shut up. I really do. And I think he should have been advised to shut up sometimes because when he speaks, he sounds like he's been to the David Beckham uh, School of Intelligence. You know, he sounds like a six or seven year old kid trying to be intelligent and it just doesn't work. You know, in the interviews, he thinks he's getting under Carl Froch's skin. He's just boring Carl Froch to death. And Carl Froch just wants to get out of the interview and wants to get on with the fight. And you, you can hardly blame him. I mean, some of the drivel that comes out of Groves' mouth is unbelievable. So I'm surprised he wasn't told just to shut up a little bit. Anyway, let's look. First of all, let's clear one thing up. For Groves, Groves fans and George Groves himself, before tomorrow night starts, you need to get one thing right. You lost the last fight. Because the way Groves fans and Groves talks most of the time, he talks as if he still won the fight. Look, he fought really well in the fight. We know that. He, he gave, you know, Froch... A bit of a boxing lesson, as they say, for five or six rounds. Caught him loads. Massive punch in the first round, put him down. You know, Groves was stylish. He was quick. You know, he was in and out. He was great to watch. But in the end, when the crunch came, he lost. We know it was a dodgy stoppage, but nobody out there can say Groves wasn't on his way out. Another 10 seconds, he'd have been on the deck. Finished. You know, Froch has fought a lot harder men than George Groves and put them away. So let's clear that up and then we can start tomorrow night afresh. So what do I think is going to happen tomorrow night? Well, I think uh, Froch is going to win the fight within about eight rounds. He ain't going to be as stupid as last time. He ain't going to be quite as cocky going in there thinking he can just walk in the ring and beat George Groves. He now knows Groves has got a bit of a punch on him. He now knows how you know stylish Groves is and how he can put some lovely combinations together. So Froch is going to be working this out a little bit better now. He's going to have a look for a bit. He's going to be in and out. But I think you're going to see a completely different Carl Froch. From a fitness point of view, there's no problem with Froch. From a strength point of view, there's no problem. From a warrior point of view, there's no problem. He can punch as well. He's also a little bit better boxer than people make out. You don't become a multi-world champion and beat some of the guys he's beaten. Uh, without being a little bit of a good boxer. So a little bit of respect, I think, from the Groves fans sometimes as well. And I don't think, personally, when I look at the people that uh, uh, Froch has fought, some he's beaten, obviously a couple he's lost to, I think Groves would have struggled against all the top guys. I really do. Because when I've seen Groves fight, and when I, you know, when I saw him in the, uh, the Froch fight, the first one, he cowered, he turned his back, if he's doing those kind of things against the guys that Froch has fought at the top level, they'd have all beaten him. You cannot show those kind of signs at top level and expect to beat those the main guys. Because when it comes to the crunch, when you have to start taking punches yourselves, that's when you find out if you're a world champion or not. You know, I remember Barry McGuigan against uh, Pedroza. You know, Pedroza at the heart of a lion. He was getting absolutely battered, battered by McGuigan. But he couldn't and he wouldn't go down. And he kept landing bombs on McGuigan, even when he was under the most intense pressure. Why? Because he was a world champion. And he had that inner, inner strength that makes a world champion. That is the inner strength that Froch has got. And I don't think, or I haven't seen from Groves, that warrior, inner, deep hardness of a man that just makes you fight that little bit more when you're under pressure. It might be seen tomorrow night. He might have got a bit better. He might have learnt his lesson. He might have changed a little bit. But if he hasn't, it's going to be the same result. The only thing that's going to get Groves' victory tomorrow night for me is obviously 
a one-off punch like the first time and, and Frotch goes to sleep. Or if Frotch has aged overnight. He's 36, but he's a young 36. But if he has suddenly aged overnight and he gets into that ring and he suddenly looks like a 36-year-old, looks rusty, he's 20% slower than the first fight, then Groves can beat him. But only age will stop Frotch from beating Groves tomorrow night. Enjoy the fight, folks. Hope it's another classic. As I say, for me, Frotch is going to win inside eight rounds. Bye for now.